So I was waiting to make this video until I actually found footage of the damn fight. But unfortunately, I was not able to find anything other than just highlight reels that kind of summarized what happened in the fight. But based on that, based on what little I saw of the fight when I managed to find a stream of it, and based on what I've read of the fight, it looks like Kazuto Yoka pretty much got a more conclusive victory over Juan Carlos Revico in their rematch of the first fight that they originally had a few months back where Yoko won a uh, majority decision over Revico. Revico um, protested that decision and they managed to have a rematch. In the rematch, however, Yoka appeared from the clips that I've seen of him, and uh, I'll put the link in the description, he appeared that he was able to judge distance a lot better. Yoka's a type of guy that he like, he tends to be a little bit static as opposed to being able to really move around and make the sh good little short steps and or make the, you know, the big wide steps and, um, you know, jump in and out and such. He tends, to, he tends to fight like a big man, basically, which is kind of what he is for um, 105 to 112. And, of course, 112 is what he's at now. But the only thing is at 112, he doesn't necessarily have the physical strength to completely overpower opponents the way he did at 105 and 108. So uh, against Red Rocco, he it took a, a lot longer to, to wear him down, basically. You know, he wasn't able to wear him down as cleanly and effectively in the first fight and got caught kind of leaning in and... and, um, and uh, overselling himself basically against Revico's counters in, in the first fight a lot of the time because Yoko likes to go to the body so much you know that's why they called him the body snatcher for a little while and but in this fight I mean he he judged the distance a lot better he was able to dig to the body and then kind of step and and jump out of range and he was also using the jab a lot better which is which was a big thing where I think he probably learned from his loss to I'm not run wrong a close loss but a loss nonetheless that he needed to, to gauge distance with the jab a little bit better. And he actually really learned from the first fight with, with uh, Revico to begin with also. I mean, to be honest, he's a generally not very experienced fighter, um, Ioka, because, you know, he's 26. He's he's 19-1 and one now with 11 knockouts. I mean, that's pretty impressive to, to have, you know, such a short record in terms of number of fights, and yet he's a three-weight world world champion so you know that that says something for him at least but with that win um i mean that puts him right in line to potentially be a future opponent for juan francisco estrada in the future in the u.s possibly chocolatito in the u.s possibly now Inoue. the only thing though is kazuto yoka being promoted by tech and japan's biggest promoter and incidentally the fact that he brought in such huge ratings in japan you know he's bringing in crazy ratings over there he brought in higher ratings than Naoya Inoue and um, Takashi Uchiyama making him basically Japan's most popular fighter still and I think part of that has to do with the fact that his uncle was a world champion also so it's like you know they he they passed down the familial lines of you know being the world champions his dad was a world champ at um, 105 and 108 if I remember correctly Hiroki Hiroki Yoka and um Kazuto, he's, you know, followed in those footsteps and um, surpassed him, really. So, I, what I could see very well happening with him, considering how high his ratings are, considering how, what great of a purse, how big of a purse he brings to the flyweight divisions, is I could potentially see a fight between him and um, Zhou Shiming, who's going to be coming out, coming back uh, later this month, you know, from his own loss, incidentally, to I'm not wrong. wrong. Um, he's coming back on 112, and I recommended in a, a couple videos ago that he go down to 108, return back to you know the the weight that he fought at as an amateur, and fight against um, Ryoichi uh, Taguchi. But if even if he doesn't necessarily go back down to fight Taguchi, I think Kazuto Yoka would be a, a good test for him. Um, he's a harder fight certainly, but he also probably brings bigger money than Taguchi does. Um, Yoka and Shiming would probably bring, you know, I mean, close to a million dollar purse for each of them, really. I mean, considering the fact that most of China and, and a grip of, you know, 40%, 50% of Japan's TV audiences would be watching that fight between the two of them. You know, it'd be a, a big clash. You know, they could definitely sell it as a big cultural clash and the whole nine. You know, they, they could definitely sell that fight. And then whoever would happen to win in that fight would definitely bring, um, be a cash cow 
at flyweight or, or light flyweight, if, if not um, super flyweight. Although, concerning the fact, you know, the general risk reward of it, I doubt either Yoka or Shiming, you know, moves up to 115 to wind up being at, at great, great risk for getting KO'd by Gonzalez or um, Inoue or even Estrada. So, that's that. I mean, I'll, I'll put the link in the description from the highlights that I at least saw. Um, Yoko's a fun fighter to watch, man. I mean, uh, another good fight for him would be a rematch against Akira Yagashi, which would be excellent. Um, that kind of got thrown off the rails after Yoko lost to Runrong and Yagashi lost to Chocolatito. So, the two of them rematching also would be a great fight. But stay tuned, and I'll hit you on the next one.